So we've got this KitchenAid dishwasher that just stopped on us. It's only a few years old and it fills up with water and and nothing. So reading online that's people say, oh that sounds like the pump. I'm not gonna order a pump without checking it out for sure. Um, so you can run diagnostics mode on this thing. And I'll check it out. And then even at that, I still wanted to do a further test to be sure what it is. So I'll show you how to go into diagnostic mode. It's pretty simple. You just push three buttons three times within one second of each other. It took me a few tries actually, having said that, but I got it done. So you pick three buttons and you press them. There it goes, it all lights up. And I'm gonna run diagnostic mode. So after you start the uh, diagnostic cycle, um, <laughs> took a minute to remember this, uh, you close the door and then it will go into diagnostics mode and you can see the clean light there is blinking. So let's count. One, Oops, let's do this again. One, two, three, four. Pause. One, two, three. Counting the blink to the light after I closed the door, which I initially forgot to do after I started diagnosing them. There it goes again. One, two, three, four. Okay. I think that's enough. We got the point there. So, when you look up that 43 code in this book that is attached to the bottom panel of the dishwasher, when you take it off, there's a little plastic insert, and it tells you number four, which is on this page. Well, that's not working. That was what this was for. Hold it down so we can see. Wash motor not running. Use connection or motor circuit or multi wash motor. So we're going to check that out to see if there's actually power coming to the motor and then if that's the case we're going to replace it. So the other thing that comes in the panel is this circuit diagram. So we're going to follow the wash motor wiring and figure out that it's turquoise. So when the wash motor should come on we should get power and I've got this neat tool here that um, I don't have to disconnect or cut any wires. I can just hold it up against those turquoise wires and see what's happening. Let's go do that. All right, so that is the turquoise wire. We'll give that a check in a second. Down here on the floor, yay. Okay, so I checked it earlier and there was nothing. Now, crazy town so if I open the door the motor should shut off and that should yeah that's the one so let's try it again we'll give it push the start button to resume it as soon as I close the door or not because I have to there it goes that's it I'm gonna replace the pump well, the next trick is to move the dishwasher. There's lots of instructions on that online. Basically, shut off the power, disconnect the power, disconnect the water, or disconnect the drain. And then the screws that hold it into the bottom of the cabinet, slide her out. Now we're gonna tip her upside down because that's where the pump is. Okay, well, so I lied. I only tipped it on its side. That's gonna be good enough. So here we have the pump. Now we have to disconnect the hose that's in there. Um, I read that this has to come off to get access to the hose, whatever this piece is. So that's what I'm gonna do And this. Apparently it just slides out. I've already unclipped the power. So let's do it. 
Alright, so I've got that thing off. Apparently it's called a diverter and there's a shaft on it. Apparently you do not want to turn that otherwise it won't go back in. And I managed to get this undone. I just used a pair of needle nose pliers to bend these tabs back and she popped off. Now, um, the kit, the new one supplied me with a just a regular hose clamp because even though I have a crimper tool, I don't think the average homeowner does. So this is a lot easier to put on. So I'm actually, I don't know where my crimper tool is. Um, well, I'm sure I could find it in a few minutes, but I'm just going to use this hose clamp because it's super easy to put on. And um, The thing with any hose clamp is just like putting a hose clamp on a radiator of a car. They're plastic these days. If you do these things too tight, you'll break it. So that's what we're going to be careful of. All right. Let's get that pump off. Woohoo. Actually, let's see if I can just pull it out. Oh yeah, that's it. Oh, there's something behind there, back there. All right, well, you can see, basically it just comes out. So put the camera down and All right, so basically we just slide this back in and make sure those wires are in the right spot. And and do up the hose clamp. Now, don't do not do what I almost did. Uh, forget to put the hose clamp on before I slide it on because then you have to pull it off again. Anyways, yeah, once again, that just slides in there. I just got to put the camera down and do it. There we go. It's all in. Make sure you... I'll reroute these wires the way that they were. And that went in smoothly. That's in. Cold clamp is tightened. Power's connected. Alright, giddy up. It's simple enough. Let's put it back in. It's a quiet dishwasher. I love that dishwasher actually. Despite the fact that it broke. And yeah. Pick up my tools and call it a day. Oh, I gotta put the panel back on and documents away. But yeah, I did it. Ooh.